you know, with the four-day turnaround, the first four-day hours is crucial to, to ensure that you know, by that 96 hours, they're up and going and um, you know, firing all cylinders. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Yeah, you know, I guess it's a lot of lot of kids' dreams to actually be able to run out and play in such a massive game. So um, you know, I'm really excited about doing it, and I can't wait. with the MCG. Bears his opponent. Hibbert gets back. Hooker. Well done, Hooker. But only as far as Blair. Blair was neat. Did it well. Got him with a chance. Beams has got a loose man. And he delivers to side bottom. He's been everywhere, really. A couple of braces he's had. And he's pushing that back. It held the line late. It's a goal. The first on Anzac Day. Doors in front, slaps it down. Hard in hand, dragged down. Did he get boot to ball? Swan's got it in the pocket. Stacks and kicks the goal. How about that? Well done, goal sack. Ricochets in the wrong direction for Collingwood, though. His hand pass was indiscriminate. Falling to the ground is Beams. Look out, Bombers. He'll do something with it. Pendlebury. Beams cloak turns around. Goes in, gets the goal. Dyson to Fletcher, talk about Mr. Call. Spirals the ball towards the boundary line. It's been a really good first half, so competitive and competitive. And that scoreboard in the end, probably about right. Collingwood a couple of goals in front. Second half then, opening bounce up high bell chambers. Swan, Pendlebury. It starts very much as it ended in the first half. Blair seems to be okay now. Was nursing a leg at half time. Another ball tap forward from Buckley. Goal sack, five metres out. Run down from behind. Goal sack again. Oh, I think it's a goal still, is it? Or did it brush the post? We might have a replay here. Half time with Pendlebury. So front of the goal, Swan! Swan! Straight in front, he kicks his second, on a good edge away again. Seems to shoot them better. Well, Chambers with a tap, Swan running through, and kicks his third. Monaghan inside the kick from Davies. Davies waiting, it won't come down, eventually it does. <laughs> Three steps before Keith got to him. Fantastic by the Bombers. David comes in, gets the goal, scores a level at the G. Well, it was upended. 
it comes to Ryder. Ryder the high ball. How will it bounce? The wrong way. Well, the right way as it turned out for the Bombers. Powell, Stanton, Stanton, the unlikeliest of heroes today. Out wide, Colin, look at the numbers. Tenderbury's good at picking his way through things. Left foot, and Essendon couldn't quite get to it. Sinclair's been bubbly late, hasn't he? How far does he go in with the kick to full forward? Claude, not quite. Flair, Collingwood, back in front. Just long down the line. The champion of the day will have the final say as he kicks the ball down the line. What a game. What a win. Cracking game of footy. Um, we probably, you know, we only won, you only win by you know, the smallest of margins. So in the end, you, you, um, they had just as many opportunities as we did. Conditions like that, you need a little bit of luck, and um, the ball can, ball can skid or squeeze out of a stoppage and go to a loose player um, here and there. And I think, you know, that happens. But over the course of the game, I thought we were, we were very good at playing the way we wanted to play, and um, very happy to get the reward for it. I think Swanee's got great pride in his performance, and um, he, he we, we challenge all of our players really strongly internally to um, to find new levels of performance. Um, and Swanee, every the last three or four weeks, have asked for something a little bit extra from Swanee. And today, I wanted him to kick a few goals, and he's gone and done that. Last week, it was you know clearances and, and hardball gets and. Contested possessions and he, and he performed. Today was, a, was an exceptional game um, against a pretty good midfield and some good clearance players. 20 contested possessions, plenty of clearances, and three goals. He's done, he's done very well. And we're looking forward to that improvement to continue. <laughs> and I know on our end, uh, we did everything probably on a little bit more to make sure our bodies were right. So, you know, we knew we had to run in our legs, and um, I thought it showed. Must be the weight I'm losing from knocking off at the moment. So, um, Starting to get a little bit fitter, clearly. As I said in the lead-up, it was the most important game of our year. And um, Western Bulldogs on Friday week will be the next most important game of our year. Get him up, son. Dorsey, boy. This morning we are heading towards a 90-minute session, which will be fairly solid, based around game-style play, um, some structures, and, and a fair bit of hard running. Uh, my role today will be observing, um, seeing that uh, things can run smoothly, talk to the coaches at uh, the right appropriate time and uh, come up with some different ideas. Gary, Joel's go up to about 45. That's it. It's better. Marvellous the difference, kicking up from 45 to 50. Interesting stat. When they go to 45, they haven't missed one. When they kick it from 50, it's only five metres, they kick one out of ten. Just that extra five metres, they're not trying to overstretch. You've got, you've got to train to get to the point where they feel like that 50 in train. Yeah. yeah. Because 45 is going to become, have to become 30 in the game. Yeah. Just dropped it really close. Like the one, close to my foot? Yeah, you dropped it really close to your body, it was like that. So therefore you've got nowhere to go, therefore you've got no power. Block, it's more of a resource for the coaches, um, but you still grab him and have a chat and he still observes. So um, I've definitely still picked his brains and wanted to know what he thought. And um, Even out in the track, there's certain times when he'll grab someone off the side and say, oh, this, this or this. Um, so he, he's obviously been really good for the players as well. Good direction. Well done, Brownie. Brownie, that was good. That was good telling Clarkie that. It was well yeah. done. Good stuff. My role is to try and help the coaches mainly, um, but obviously, obviously, younger players have got more room for improvement, got more areas you've got to focus on. So there's been a few focus areas for some of those young lads. So just um, I, I find myself just reinforcing those points. Once you got it, 
you were there, there like this to make sure that he didn't get around you? No. Go at him. Go at him. Go at him. Because then he might hang on to it and you tackled him. Yep. Come on, Woody, now push down. Push down, Woody. Come on. Come on, Woody, run. Come on, Sags. Come on, Sags. You could do your work early, mate. If you do your work early, then you'll save yourself a lot of effort. By staying there, because I'm tired, and all of a sudden, then you've got to run 80. If you jog 40, you'll save yourself a lot of effort. According to our live GPS, we do between 10 and 12K, most of the players, so it's a pretty solid uh, session, which is what we wanted to get. But, um, seems that everyone's come through pretty well, so we achieved our aims before what we set before the session, and uh, looking forward to next week. Good evening and welcome to the club tonight. Our guest in the studio is Rocket Ed. Rocket, welcome to the show. Thanks, Glenn. We're heading in around six. How are you settling in at Collingwood? Uh, good, yeah, certainly really enjoying it. Um, obviously a different role. Um, uh, as I mentioned on the, on the, on the TV then, that uh, obviously more to do with the coaches and more, not, not overseeing, but ha having an overlook at uh, things and how they work and uh, have some ideas, because obviously the... The four coaches are going to coach the players per se, so I don't have a lot to do with the players directly, but certainly enjoying the role. It's great. Do you miss senior coaching? Um, not as much as I thought I would. Um, I think uh, I think there was probably still a little bit in me at the at the time I left the Bulldogs last year, but uh, now that uh, I'm on the other side of the fence per se, um, I I must admit I I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying the. Uh, I suppose it's all care and no responsibility. <laughs> it's a relatively young coaching group that you're working with. Many of them you would have coached against them when they were playing. Yeah. Have any of them surprised you? Um, I think they've all got an element to them that uh, has surprised me. Matthew Lappin and Ben Hart's uh, ability to read the game. I didn't realise it would be as strong as what it is. And, uh, and Robert Harvey, uh, the same. But uh, I think we see Robert as a, a quiet sort of mild-mannered guy and, uh, and the way he played his footy he was a real humble champion as a footballer but he's got very strong views on the way the game should be played he's got very strong views on the way he sees stoppages and those sort of things as a midfield coach it's very impressive how much was it uh, was it of a culture shock for you to come from the western bulldogs to collingwood um yeah i, I think i'm i think i'm noticing that more and more as we go along i, I don't think initially uh, because we were into pre-season and uh the facilities at the bulldogs are are pretty good, so therefore they're not that far behind Collingwood, or you now it's probably about equal. Um, but as as time goes on, you, you know you realise the enormity of Collingwood Football Club with the amount of uh, sponsors, the amount of supporters, the membership base, etc., etc., and the amount of media coverage. So I think as time goes on, I think that'll grow on me more and more. We're playing the Bulldogs this Friday night. I'd love you to stick around and just so I can pick your brain about what we can expect. Can you stick around till after the break? More we'll do, Glenn. All right, after the break, more Rocket Eid, and now a word from one of Collingwood's favourite sons, Simon Preston Giacomo. Presti's lining up for his third goal in his career, I believe. No trouble at all. Practice makes perfect. 106 games, three goals. Started at Collingwood in 1996. Um, Straight out of the, the draft from the under-18s, played at the Northern Knights, um, got drafted as a centre forward. Never played at fullback in my life till, till that sort of first year when Danny Frawley just decided it might be a, a good idea to try me at fullback in one of the reserves games um, and did all right there. And then, and then the next week, um, ended up playing my first game. I guess it took me a, a few years just to start to build up and start to feel comfortable and, and, and know what to do and know how to position and things like that. So. Um, yeah, I, I guess it was, it was good that I sort of, I guess you could say I finally sort of got there. 2010, I actually got a knock on my quaddy in, I think it was around round 18 against the Bombers. Ended up going to see the doctor straight after it and within an hour he'd booked me into hospital and um, had to get it drained. He was trying to get up for like the qualifying final, just wasn't quite ready. And then on the Wednesday, um, we are doing a similar thing and it just sort of hurt my groin. At first I didn't think it was overly too bad. Going through my head, am I going to hide this? What? And I just sort of thought I can't. I, I know I won't be able to, to run if I do play. I'm, I'm going to, I was playing new, I was probably going to play on Rewalt, so I thought I'm not even going to last a quarter. And we just sort of said, yeah, probably probably wasn't going to play. That's, you've got a feel for Simon Preston, you can't make it. A bit like Josh Fraser talking about premiership being built by clubs, grand finals, one grand final day. It's going to be a draw. It's unbelievable. The 
what's happened? When the siren went, um, my heart was just racing. Like I, the, I, I looked across at Tark and Lockyer who'd missed out as well, and we both sort of thought, we're, we're a chance here. And I really just, I guess, started to try and do that extra rehab that I thought I wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't need to have done. And unfortunately, it was, it was still just not getting better. Collingwood win by their greatest ever margin in a grand final. It doesn't get better than that. Obviously, a great day for the great day for the club. Personally, it was, you know, a great day, but also one of the one of the toughest days that I've had. But um, yeah, just great for the club. My current role at the club's merchandise operations manager started in May last year, um, and yeah, it's just been. I guess just an amazing sort of eye-opener as to what happens behind the scenes in, a, in an AFL club. We've, we did our um, membership campaign and, and we all had to wear opposition um, Guernseys and things like that, so I got stuck in the Port Adelaide Guernsey. If you sort of look, it's, it's the majority of the staff that are actually in the, in the photo. We've recently just um, put up some QR codes, which, which are the little, the little barcode black dotted things that you probably see are everywhere now that you can scan on your new smartphones and it pretty much is is a, an online shop 24 hours a day so if by, by chance you're walking past and the shop's closed or something like that you can actually scan it, order a, order a Guernsey and can get delivered to your door. I guess it's just, just another way of trying to get to our members and get to our supporters and, and, and really just provide some, some extra services to them. We're doing a redevelopment at the Westpac Centre so the store is going to be a lot bigger and we're really going to work on interactive type things in the shop so just really yeah, excited in, in working in that sort of area and that, that space at the moment. Well some very interesting footage there of Sherrod Wellingham. Rocket, how would that have gone down in your days at uh, Hawthorne back in the, uh, the 70s and the 80s? <laughs> I think he might have copped a fair bit of flack in my days. I might have, uh, might have played a lot of tricks on him as well. So I think he might have been a bit embarrassed back in the 80s. In all honesty, though, we can't knock him too much. He's actually been very good since he's come back into the side and he'll be very important for us again on Friday night. Oh, for sure. His last two weeks have been terrific and uh, I think he had just got confidence from his first game and, uh, as I said, his, his, first two, his, sorry, his last two weeks have been terrific. Now, it's your old team, the Western Bulldogs. You've coached them. You know them inside and out. Uh, what can we expect this week? Who do we need to sort of keep an eye on? Um, yeah, they um, they've obviously won the last two games, so I think their confidence will be up. Um, which, uh, uh, you know, they had a slow start to the year, but they've got, still got quite a few good players. There's no doubt about that. Griffin and Cooney, Boyd in the midfield, so they've got a terrific midfield. Uh, they've got a couple of injuries down back, which, is, which has hurt them, Williams and Morris. Um, but I think it's the players like Darehouse was an up-and-coming star. So, so those type of players, their ability to run the ball, uh, they're still plus cross and, and these type of players. Um, but they play a contested game. They like to get numbers around the ball, so we expect a pretty fierce contest. And uh, the strengths for us? Um, I think uh, our strength has been our evenness. I, I, obviously, Swanee played very well last week, and Pendles has had a very good start to the year. But I think we're just starting to get some players back. You know, we've had a few injuries. I think our fitness is just starting to kick in. So, I think I think uh, having Reed and Shaw back will be a real plus for us as well. Uh, we've got a few guys coming into the back line as well. Reed's back, and uh, also Shaw. That's a great positive for us. It is. It is, and that's where that's where we've had a lot of our injuries. But I think um, I, I think we've held up pretty well there. Especially Lachlan Keefe has done extremely well. He's mm. um, you know, he's only played. He's played the five games this year and I think it's about eight or nine for his career but he's really stepped up which has been a real pleasing aspect. Uh, their back line might struggle with our forward line a little bit too. Um, yeah, I think uh, obviously they've had Markovic out the last couple of weeks as a tall defender uh, and that's where they've had their injuries so hopefully Travis and Chris Dawes can get hold of a few and um, even if it's raining obviously playing under the roof is going to be a plus for us. So, um, uh, I thought we, we certainly created enough chances last game. We didn't kick straight, so hopefully we can have our kicking boots on Friday night. Well, Rocket, thanks for coming into the studio and being our guest. And thanks to everyone at home for watching, and we look forward to catching up with you next week on The Club.